So, I just spent a bunch of time, about 10 minutes, talking about molecular signaling, which is definitely a passion of mine. Um, if it, you know, seems pretty complicated, even after you've watched that video a couple of times, you know, come to class, ask me questions. But here's the basics you need to know from before. All cells spend most or all of their time in interface. Cells prepare for mitosis going through the three phases of interphase, gap one, DNA synthesis, and gap two. Non-dividing cells remain in kind of a, you know, pre-G1 phase that we just call G0. And those cyclins and CDKs, the cyclin-dependent kinases, help regulate the cell through the cell cycle checkpoints. So the building up of acti active CDK is what helps the cell move into mitosis and complete cell division. After interphase, the cell moves into mitosis. Mitosis is the process of dividing the genetic material. So you've got interphase and mitosis there. Mitosis divides the genetic material. Eukaryotic cells that have gone through mitosis should end up as two identical what we call daughter cells. Since all eukaryotes have nuclei, they must divide the nucleus before they can divide the cytoplasm. They have to make sure all of that genetic material is tucked back safely inside a nucleus. And so we also have a phase for the division of the cytoplasm, and that's called cytokinesis. The M phase that I underlined in yellow can also refer to cytokinesis and mitosis together, or it can stand for just mitosis, the division of the nucleus. So when I talk about mitosis, I'm going to be talking about the division of the nucleus. If I say M phase, then I'll be talking about both mitosis and cytokinesis together. Mitosis includes four major phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. We've also added, in recent years, a subphase called prometaphase that comes between prophase and metaphase. And it's been added to better represent all the things we know that are going on. Um, prophase used to have a huge list of things that happened during prophase, so we've subdivided it now. So in order for mitosis to begin, all of that loosely arranged DNA that the cell's been using to direct its activities has to be tightly packed into chromosomes. It is the absolute safest way to move DNA around. There's much less chance for damage to the DNA. So you can think of this like packing up your house for a move. You're not just going to throw everything into a box and, you know, just leave all those air spaces, they'll shake around and on the way to your new place, everything will break. Um, so when you're moving, you pack things up, you put buffers around things like paper or bubble wrap, and then everything is kept safe. And that's exactly what compacting the DNA into those rod-like chromosomes does for the cell. It keeps the DNA safe. This is just a quick drawing. This was made I think in the late 1800s, um, early cell scientists were able to dye cells to be able to see them under a microscope. And the chromosomes, chroma for color, um, they were the most highly visible under the microscope. And you can see from these drawings that it was the chromosomes, those long rod-like stringy looking structures here that stood out. Now here's what we know about chromosomes today, and I think the way chromosomes pack themselves up is really cool. Um, each long strand of DNA, whether it's condensed or stringy, gets referred to as a chromosome. DNA is arranged around proteins, and at that point we call the DNA chromatin. Chromosomes are made of chromatin. The DNA is always associated with these proteins. 
Now, to stuff all of the DNA into a tiny nucleus, it needs to be organized and it needs to be pretty dense. And so both of those goals are met with a type of protein called histones. Histone proteins are positively charged and they attract the negatively charged phosphates of DNA. Eight histone proteins come together wrapping around two loops of DNA. I'll show you this more in a second. And it forms a tiny bead we call a nucleosome. Before condensing, this is how DNA looks. It's a bunch of tiny beads with strands of DNA running between them. Condensins help to further compact the chromosome into a thick rod, and I'll show you condensins and cohesins in a later slide. But you can see that the packed chromosome forms these loops and so there are proteins helping them form the loops and there are proteins helping the loops to coil into that thick rod. Here is a more detailed look at a nucleosome. You can see the eight distinct histones. They would also have little positive tails on them that would help wrap around that DNA. Um, either keeping it tightly wound or if the tails let go allowing that DNA to be accessed by other proteins. You can see there's a special histone protein that keeps this all together. And all of this, this single bead on a string, is what we call a nucleosome. Here are those cohesins and condensins. So the cohesins, when the DNA is replicated, the cohesins come in and help keep those two strands of matching DNA together. Later on, as the cells condense, fewer cohesins are needed because the DNA is more compact and less stringy, um, but it requires special proteins, the condensins, to organize the super tight coiling of the DNA. When you're looking at a chromosome, it looks like an X, and that's actually two sister chromatids. They're identical, they're held together at a point we call the centromere, and each half is considered a sister chromatid, even though it's got the full sequence of DNA from that chromosome. Together, this would be referred to as a chromosome, or I like to call it a replicated chromosome, to distinguish it from a chromosome that forms once this X-shaped structure breaks apart. When you break at the centromere, you have two unreplicated chromosomes left over. It's kind of a weird use of the term chromosome, but that's the way biologists talk about it. And finally, at all of the ends, you've got these special DNA sequences that form the telomeres, which are kind of like buffer regions. Again, kind of like the bumpers on a car, these can get a little bit more scraped and a little bit more banged up as the chromosomes all move around without damaging some of the more important regions of the DNA. And that is a chromosome. One last structure you want to be familiar with is the centrosome. That's what you see here. You've got two centrioles at perpendicular angles to each other and that forms your centrosome. This is also in your book called a microtubule organizing center because you can see that the centrioles are made out of microtubules and they also have microtubules extending out from you from them and during mitosis they're going to become the center of what's called the mitotic spindle and there's going to be lots of microtubules forming those spindle fibers um, and these two things will be located at either side of the cell and those are referred to as the poles. So like the North Pole and the South Pole, you've got your poles of the cell as the two cells pull apart. More on that to come when we actually start talking about mitosis. But before you move into mitosis, make sure that you remember or are more familiar with all of these words. There is a lot of vocabulary in this unit and mitosis is pretty simple, but I'm going to be using a lot of these terms, so you want to be familiar with these terms before you move on.